Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today which is just going to cover something that I've just sort of uh, figured out. Let's say the Apple corner. This came about because I posted a video the other day on... I'd modelled the exterior form of the MacBook Air M1. And a long time uh, viewer and person that I've had several discussions with, Tony in Sweden, got in touch and said he... He's adamant the corners are made a different way from what I sort of tend to do or well I build corners differently sometimes I build it with a segment and then some blends on each side or I build the whole corner out of one uh, spline like I did on the MacBook M1 so Tony first got in touch with me years ago about um, a modeling challenge which was this it's this toaster retro toaster so I modeled this in SolidWorks he picked the subject and um, yeah Anyway, very chromey. Uh, Tony's brought this thing to my attention called a, a clothoid spiral or a clothoidal transition which are used in road building because in railways because they have a, a linear change of curvature so it's not peaky anywhere. So his thought was that the apple corner was made from a with an arc section in the middle and then um, with a clothoidal uh, transition on each side and every time I've had a look I haven't had much luck um, finding what would you say a useful or something that I can actually implement because it's 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 all pretty math heavy but luckily I found on the Rhino forum a little grasshopper definition from Ivan Gallic so that's probably been uploaded since I last had a look at this sort of subject so he's been nice enough to upload this definition uh, which creates a uh, clothoidal transition between clothoid transition curve between a line and an arc so it's illustrated a few things that I've been doing wrong in regards to the apple corner so I'll just turn this curvature off so what I've done is I've scanned in I've traced around a few apple products that we've got in the house and uh, brought in this curve here so this is the M1 Airbook MacBook Air sorry and because to allow for the pencil line so we're drawing around the inside here. So this is what I've come up with using using Ivan Gallic and uh, Matej Fitos's uh, script here, which is actually quite a lot of. This is what I mean. I'm not not a programmer. It's there's a lot of stuff. Uh, anyway, so thanks again for them for this. There's some controls which you can control the radius of the arc, but the other one which I've is a different way of approaching this is it's. It's the length of the actual clothoid transition, so this, this piece of um, geometry here. So if you change that, you can see what's happening is the arc actually moves inwards and outwards. Can you see there? So this arc is actually moving inwards, so that means the centre of the arc is moving away from the corner. So in the past, I've always treated this as... Um, when I've been trying to build these sorts of things, I've always treated or assumed that if we had an arc segment here and I connected it with a G3 curve or something on this end, I always assumed that the arc was tangent to the uh, to the linear elements on the outside. And as it turns out, it's not the case. So this is matching up um, pretty pretty closely with the uh, with the sketch around the the Apple product so what I've done was I thought okay what if I can translate this into some um, some ratios that you can use to to drive some sketches and other packages like SolidWorks etc because we're approximating a, a, a the clothoid curve we're not actually building one so the output of this uh, grasshopper definition is a polyline and then that polyline I've rebuilt it into a degree 5 spline so it's got six CVs and that gives us, so that's our curvature graph there. So the section of spline here uh, is, we'll just uh, bake that out. So that section of spline there has six CVs and I've measured between the CVs and it turns out they're pretty much um, equal length. So each of these control polygon segments 
So like when I set up splines in SolidWorks, sometimes I make those equal length relationships. So that sort of rung a bell in my head. I said, okay, why don't we, why don't I set up some um, geometry here, say 45 degrees. And then I fiddled around with the, with the length over here until, until I got 45 degrees here. I've changed this, so it's, 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 it's wrong now, but, um, so I played around with this until we got to almost 45 degrees. Um, and then I said, okay, we'll take some measurements off there and we'll get a ratio. So what I've done is just that. Let's just close the grasshopper stuff. So down here, I've got the MacBook Air construction. So as I said, I, I've assumed this angle here of 45 degrees. So we can create an arc 45 degrees. And for that arc, I've measured back uh, the center of the arc. So that's that's an R10. So in the past, I assumed that that arc was touching or tangent to the uh, linear sections of the curve, but it's not. Okay, so that's pretty consistent and close to what I've uh, scanned in. So as you can see there, uh, it's 0.2548 further in. Um, or uh, offset so there's there's a gap here between the outside of the arc and the line like at a tangent point of 0.2548 so I've got a radius um, a ratio here so for a given radius here then the distance offset from the uh, outside edge should be multiplied by 1.025 and then another the blend from the corner so where the blend starts here so where the clothoid or the approximation uh, starts from i have a multiplier there so you multiply the radius by 1.416 which gives us that dimension there okay so again that's a degree we type what that is a degree do, 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 degree five spline with six CVs and as I said I measured these and they're basically the segments are identical in length so that makes it quite easy for us to approximate this in SOLIDWORKS okay so I thought to prove this little theory out I better uh, try this out on a different Mac or a different Apple product so I've got an iPad Pro uh, the iPad Pro has got quite a bit larger corner so I used these multipliers here uh, to center my arc, so a radius of uh, 12, and then again the second multiplier to find where the blend starts from. And as I said before, I'd assumed um, when I was getting these dimensions out of that grasshopper definition that we want to assume that this is for an arc of... 45 degrees okay so 45 degrees between the start and end of the arc and this is the result so that's that's my sketch around the outside of the iPad Pro 12.9 um, so it's pretty close so I think this is this will translate pretty well into SOLIDWORKS um, especially because the spline segments are basically equal and I thought last thing to do which would be good to check we just bring up our let's turn the curvature graph on okay so you can see that transition it's quite linear uh, as it grows so if we straighten this arc out here not the arc sorry the blend then hopefully or well, theoretically this uh, curvature graph should be like a ramp a straight ramp right so I'm going to quickly just draw this up in SOLIDWORKS uh, and see what we end up with Okay, so we're in SOLIDWORKS, just create a sketch, top plane, I'm going to draw just a right angle, and then a line at 45 degrees, I'll dimension that, and I want to draw a circle, and this is going to be R10, so make that 20, and you can change the leader make it a radius 
Okay, now we're going to use the first ratio, which is this distance here from the edge, which is 10 for the radius times 1.025. Okay, and then I want to set up a 45 degree. Line through here, I'll just convert that to a construction geometry so we can make this symmetric. And last thing I want to do is construct some geometry to control the end of the blends. And then that dimension is the radius, so 10 times 1.416, so yeah, 14.16. Okay, so that's the construction, now we'll draw the actual geometry in a separate sketch, just so we don't have any constraints issues. Um, so top plane, going to draw a, well let's convert that entity, we'll convert these and power trim that back, and I'll just keep those as construction, okay I want to draw a line from here to here and then the same down here. And then we can draw our splines. So it's going to be a degree uh, five busier. So one, you can just draw out three points to start with, uh, and then just increase the degree this way to five. Okay, one end, make that equal curvature, other end equal curvature. And then you want to select all the control polygon segments. So you can right click on one, go select chain. And you'll just have to delete the lines, let's pick those as well, and then go equal. And then at the other end, we just repeat the same thing. Equal curvature. And select one of those control. Oh, actually, we'll do it manually. Just sometimes when they get near the tangent end it can be hard to pick them. Okay, make those equal. So if I turn the curvature graph on and have a look. So we've pretty much got what we had over in Rhino. So that's good. You can set up equations so when you change this uh, your your control uh, radius, then that will control these other dimensions and move everything around. Um, appropriately. Yeah, so there's our corner. Curvature. Right, so I think the next thing to do would be uh, to make another video update that M1 MacBook Air with this corner definition and see what happens, uh, especially around the top case, because now we've got a a corner with one, two, three surfaces building it up. I could build an approximate line through all these, but then you get tolerance issues around the joins. Um, yeah. So anyway, so thanks, Tony. I think we found it, found, found the answer finally. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.